Let me pick my nose last, last, last note. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're live. We're on YouTube. And we already got hey. three, three people watching. Already, Hello, everyone. Wow. Yeah, awesome. Good job. Uh, we could play That's some music. Me, my mum, and my wife. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> could play some music. Just chill out a little bit to see the people Ooh. running. Yeah, I'm just plugging my my like my audio branding. Kind of. Yeah, like, I, should, oh. I was gonna say you need to play all three of our audio branding. Yeah, sorry, man. Just pass me the files oh. next time. <laughs> This whole show is actually just me like trying mix, to get just your followers on my YouTube, you know? <laughs> if you want my art list subscription password, I'll happily hand it over. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, maybe let's just dive in. I mean, there's uh, two people, three people tuning in, but we'll see how people uh, keep coming in. And for the people that are watching this, Please feel free to shoot any comments, questions. Uh, this is the whole point of the live stream. It's not meant to be just me, Frank, and Ilya. Frank, I'm going to say Frank today. Uh, yep, discussing. Go for Frank. <laughs> but his actual name is not Frank, but that we will see in the nice little label. But so today uh, we'll be discussing brand branding and brand strategy, the differences, the overlaps what they mean, uh, how we work with it, and whatever you guys want to get out of your system when it comes to this. Um, so uh, maybe just a small introduction to the show before we dive in. It, the big brand debate is just something uh, me, uh, Frank, Reagan, <laughs> Ilya, and Rob uh, started because we felt like there was a lot of still openness about a lot of terms and, and things like brand differentiation, this topic of today and so we wanted to have a format where we could discuss different perspectives on all of these topics and hopefully maybe give you some more insights into into these different worlds and realms uh, that's the idea and so for today uh, first we'll be doing a short intro of the guests of course we we already know uh, Ilya but maybe for new people tuning in uh, and other people and of course uh, Reagan will also introduce himself and then we'll do a small definition round just like every, every each of us gets a little chance to just say what he thinks brand branding and brand strategy is and then maybe we can hop into some more opinionated stuff like what we feel is wrong with something when we're talking about these definitions and then we can get into some good old jabbing if we want to and then hopefully at the end we'll we can have some takeaways uh so it's not all just you're wrong and i'm right but hopefully we can learn something from this so that's it let's just hop in uh maybe quickly uh reagan you're new on this round introduce yourself quickly and uh, then we can have Ilya as well too easy. Um, g'day all, I'm Reagan McCreel. You can call me Frank though. It's my middle name. That's why I go by Frank that you might hear Steph interchangeably use Frank. Let's just let's just go with Frank here just yeah. to make it easier yeah. for everyone. Um, <laughs> it, it's the name of my business, G'day Frank, uh, brand identity designer, also helping podcasters start their podcast at the moment too. Um, I'm from Sydney, Australia and, uh, and been doing this now for two, nearly three years now. Um, as my own business before that working in television television production as a in-house designer creating identities for tv shows um, working with uh, big brands as well at the same time as working in that job with like Volkswagen, McDonald's, Optus, big airlines um, and here I am now working from home <laughs> but with businesses from around the world. So that's why your production levels are always so good you were in like tv before no? Yeah, there's there's some there's some influence there. It wasn't something that I did, but I just watched, you know, what the quality kind of was and had an interest in, you know, camera gear and lighting and what that does to a production setup, you know, at a big scale. But then how can you do that as as a small scale? Um, so that's why you kind of see my level of, I guess, production as something that is maybe a bit more elevated than others. But yeah, it, it's cheap to do this stuff. It's just knowing how to do it. And, um, you know, that's what I enjoy doing. So that's why you, you might see my nice little pink light behind and the reflection in the, in the glasses going. Is, is so, so sexy. Yeah, you just, can just you keep can, it there. To keep can, it there. There we go. Right there. Just. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, Ilya. 
Go ahead, man. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Ilya Lobanov. I'm the founder of Studio, a branding agency in, well, originally based in Australia. At the moment, I'm briefly back in my homeland, Russia. Uh, but uh, like Frank, my clients are international, although I would say majority of them are still Australian predominantly, uh, working remotely as um, uh, I guess many people are anyway these days. Uh, and I also happen to, to be passionate about passing on what I know uh, with other designers uh, through uh, my Instagram. That's basically me in a nutshell. Awesome. That's cool. Uh, and yeah, me, Steph Hamelink. Uh, I'm running my own studio now. Steph Hamling Studio, very creative. Uh, just started recently, so very excited. Uh, it's been running pretty good, actually. I'm, I'm uh, happy with the first months and also running uh, the Let's Talk Branding podcast and now uh, putting a little bit more time into this whole YouTube stuff. So that's basically it. Maybe we can dive in. Uh, already like eight people watching. Hi, Di Daria. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, so again, pop in the chat, say hi. Let us know where you're from, where you're watching. I uh, would love to know more. Uh, but let's maybe dive in with that first round of definitions, just so we have an idea of at least where we're coming from in terms of what do you think a brand is? What do you think branding is and brand strategy is? Uh, I don't know who wants to bite off uh, um, the first so Steph, just a quick quick question. Yeah, uh, sure. I was wondering if we, before we kind of dive in into um, our own definitions, I don't know if we all have our own definitions or if we mm -hmm. kind of stick to, uh, you know, adhere to uh, like a famous quote or definition uh, that's mm -hmm. existing. But I was wondering if it would be good just to, uh, rattle off uh, some existing definitions out there already that we may be, you know, by, by famous authors and people, um, uh, something that people might already be familiar with. And just so that kind of sets up uh, a bit of a context as to why we're even having this discussion in the first place so that, you know, there, we can see that even from those definitions that is already that True. Um, kind of sure. differ difference or differentiation of the, of the definitions. <laughs> No, no, hey, I've, got some, yeah, it, <laughs> I've got some here, just if, you, if I yeah, can yeah. Shoot, rattle shoot. them off and then if you Go guys ahead. can uh, got any of that ones, I can um, Go ahead. add too. So uh, from Investopedia, which is, uh, I think they congregate uh, different definitions. I'll read them out uh, uh, all one by one and we can just, I guess, discuss them. Uh, brand is an, an identifying symbol, mark, logo, name, word, and or sentence that companies use to distinguish their product from others. And I actually find that definition to be very closely connected to that Philip Kotler and Gary Armstrong uh, definition where they, they say a name, a term, a sign, symbol, or a combination of this that identifies the maker or seller of the product. So they kind of, mm -hmm. there's a bit of similarities with those. Then uh, one of my favorite definitions is by David Ogilvy, who's one, one of my idols is the, you know, do the big advertising agency, uh, or at least was, um, he defined it as the intangible sum of a product's attributes, its name, packaging, and price, its history, its reputation, and the way it's advertised. Then, of course, we know the Jeff Bezos definition is your brain is what others, uh, other people say when you're not in the room. And then the, the Martin Neumeyer, the some people call him the, the godfather of <laughs> branding. Some people might disagree. Um, he defines uh, brand as a person's perception of a product, service, experience, or an organization. And then... Does, um, does this he is say not, gut feeling? Just because I gut, always remember it as gut feeling. Yeah, I think there's the, there's a vari variation of okay. what he yeah. uh, refers to. Sometimes it's a gut feeling, sometimes it's the perception. Yeah. Uh, but okay. maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've pulled it off no, no. of some It doesn't matter. It it's just that, that sticky in my head, the gut feeling one. Yeah. Uh, and then there is a definition which is not purely about the branding, but I think it, it's uh, or a brand. I think it's just worth um, uh, voicing out this uh, saying by Peter Drucker. He's a, mm -hmm. kind of a sales managerial guy. And he... Um, uh, one of his phrases that he said is the purpose of a business is to create and keep a customer. And many people take that as somewhat almost like a definition of a brand as well, which is the purpose of a brand is or for a business is to create and become a brand. So that's how. Uh, hmm. So those are kind of some well-known, I guess, phrases and definitions. And, uh, and then we can 
if you guys have any of the other ones that you um, know by famous people or people that um, are in the industry, that would be Well, Reagan great. has some yeah. really good definitions. <laughs> you <just laughs> mentioned before the show. <laughs> No. <laughs> what, what's your what's there. your like what's your take on just hearing all of these definitions, uh, Frank? Yeah, yeah, Frank. Yeah, the I think when you, you you collate them all together, I think what you get out of that is what's your own feeling about you know a business that interaction that you have with a business. It really comes down to everyone's viewpoint on what a brand is is going to be different. And that's okay because I think at the end of the day, that's probably what it really means is what's your experience with that business. And that experience is the sum of what the brand is to you. You, can, I mean, as a business owner, that you can influence it, um, that experience, obviously, with the different touch points that you offer or, you know, sensorial things. This is kind of getting into my kind of um, definition of how I kind of see it, but when you kind of combine all these together, it's thinking about the customer. It's thinking about um, all these different things that we're all trying to consider as a, a branding designer or a brand strategist or a business owner of how we can be perceived, how we can be recognized, how we can be um, memorable, all these different things that, you know, I don't think there's ever going to be one definition that rules them all unless you know someone just says it and it just gets put into the only dictionary left in the world and that's what it becomes and <laughs> archaeologically that's what branding is but i really doubt that's going to happen yeah agreed and uh paul lewis uh who's also in the in the live stream oh uh, paul hey uh, yeah, man a good friend he he said um a, a definition by walter lander products are made in the factory brands are created in the mind which is uh, again, I think, alluding to what you were saying about how it's uh, what Marty Neumeyer says about the gut feeling. Where maybe that's more about that, like inner gut feeling, and other people are saying it's a more rational positioning. There's there's all different different types of definitions on brand, and I think I, I agree on what you both are saying. Like it's very contextual, and it's very hard to find the one definition to rule them all. And maybe it's just not necessary to ever find that. Although I do think there are some issues with some like approaches to how people define brand, but I, I want to get into that later. Maybe let's talk a little bit about branding as well, and then maybe brand strategy, because I think first off, like I agree with you guys on brand. Like I have my own definition on that. It's it's called it's a distinctive experiential promise that represents a business, which is basically all somewhat similar to what we've heard. It's about that experiential promise. It represents a business and that distinctiveness. That's just because I want to rattle some people with not using differentiated. <laughs> okay, let's. Uh, but branding, um, I think there's like a lot of the most logical thing to say is just it's an extension of what we just said right so you have a brand and then you have the verb to brand which is branding but i i won't i won't really i don't really agree with that because for a lot of people branding means different things than just the extension of to brand so that's where it gets interesting like for me branding is really creating this distinctive assets observable distinctive assets associated with a product or service which means it's narrower i mean it's more focused you might say it's more focused on brand identity visual identity graphic identity. i do open up the scope towards like i think it's the creation of all sorts of assets whether that's sonic visual even tonal i think it's broader than just visual identity but it is that creation process it's a it's a discipline it's not just an extension of that word and that's where it gets a little bit tricky but i'm curious about your your guys thoughts about just the word branding Ilya, you're up <laughs> are we going in, in order is, in the, uh, is that how it works yes <laughs> okay well, well for my for my spiel i think i, I probably need to give uh, my definition of brand as well because i've kind of rattled off the the branding sorry the um, definition of a brand by um, people out there that, that um, uh, the definition exists but my definition is um, and this is something i've struggled with a lot because of that reason i think steph alluded to that is that there is that uh, element of the intangible 
you know, the, the kind of the gut feeling or the perception or the experience. But there is still that element of the of the tangible things, you know, that, that the brand um, has. So like if we look at the history of brand, you know, how it came about is to brand the cattle, you know, Brander uh, was, mm-hmm. I, I believe it's in, in Norse, uh, old Norse language meant to to fire or to burn or something along those lines, which meant you know to to essentially stamp your um, you know element or your symbol or your name or something and, and to claim your your product and to, you know. Um, so I think there is still that element in there, obviously in the brand identity and the, those uh, tangible assets. So initially, I started defining the brand as the intangible beliefs and perceptions individual form about the commercial entity. And for me, the branding then was the continuous effort to effort to influence those perceptions through external and internal touch points. Uh, and in with those two definitions, for me, they actually work in combination. So it's almost like I, I see them as they have to, to be connected all the time. In other words, they can't live separately. Um, that, like, does a brand exist if you don't do any branding? Yes, it does. But in, if we want to look at the uh, cohesive or wholesome picture of what a brand means i think it's both the customer's perception which is the gut feeling and all of those feelings that uh, we experience but also what the you know business does to contribute it's like a um is it a venn diagram i don't know it's the two circles combined and then in the middle you have brand so so it's kind of to me that's how i see brand and branding defined interesting frank uh, there's one thing in your, your definition there, Ilya, that, that um, interests me. You said visual. Um, and I, I can understand that there was two elements to it and you can't have one without the other. And that's probably where it, it, it negates that whole word of being visual, um, which is okay. I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to contest your thing because we're, we're not at the uh, fisticuff stage yet. We'll get there. Yeah. Um, but for me, like, I guess branding for that I see others doing compared to maybe what I might do myself is a definition of branding to some people might be just creating the visual identity, which I find quite problematic and say, okay, I do branding. I'm going to, you know, brand your business. You're, you're only really hitting on one potential um, element of creating a, an identity, which is why, why I like to call what I do brand identity design, because you are looking at an, a, a business as if it has its own, identity and that isn't just visual it's not what you just see so like let's say you take me for example here you've got brown hair you've got glasses you've got a beard you've got airpods you've got a, a cheap ass shirt from uniqlo some lighting and, and all, everything like that you can make your assumptions about how i sound the way i come across my personality um all these things are encompassing but what if you couldn't see me right now what would that perception be that's why i don't think visual the visual sense is, is when people say I do branding and I, I'm only doing the visual side of things, it's like, okay, you're doing the logo design, you're doing that visual identity. And that's one element you, depending on the business, uh, are missing out on other kind of experiential elements of what that brand is. A lot of the time it only needs to be the tone of voice and that message, but then it, it a lot of the time as well can be value-based stuff of, okay, what do, what do we stand for? What was our purpose here so that people can understand this is what we're here to try and do, not just sell to you, not just to, you know, tell you what you should be doing. There is something else there that is some either common purpose, mission, vision, whatever the frig it is, hmm. um, that your business is trying to communicate to work with those that, you're you're trying to help um so if if you're creating if you're doing branding that exercise that practice that process of developing something in the mind or the gut or the the heart the head the eyes the ears the nose the mouth wherever it might be the skin it, it like that's what it comes down to so depending on what the business is if you're a perfume brand there's an element of what that brand is is the smell you walk into you know their store you're going to be hit with a sensory overload and that is that smell that might come back to you when some lady walks past you down the road and you go okay that was that smell i remember that smell or you walk into a house and it's a similar smell that you might have remembered from when you were a kid i've had that really weird kind of thing there's there's brand elements in that 
Um, but then there's also um, feel like if you went scuba diving, let's say, and you're at the scuba diving business, what that feeling is of either if it's cold water, if it's really warm water, if, depending if you're going on the Great Barrier Reef here in Australia, or if you're up in the Nordic area where it's freezing cold and whoever's providing that experience, there's that relationship of a brand. So it's it's a hard thing to create, obviously, a branding experience, and sometimes it's not needing to actually create it, but that's something that you touch on when you are creating branding. The feeling of what you are going to get from this experience is A, B, C, or D, and this is what we want to kind of lean into. For many businesses, be it product or service, you're probably not going to have all of these ex like experiential elements and it's typically the visual it's typically the tone of voice and it's typically those those kind of gut feelings or, or whatnot about how you have felt interacting with that business or seeing them from a distance because we all have an opinion about whatever business we see it's either very indifferent or it's i love it or i have no idea who they are mm -hmm. um yeah there's, and there's, i think yeah to to interrupt you there sorry um that's right. One thing that, that comes to mind when I hear these definitions and, and I, I felt into the same trap, like I think I do think if we would scope all the world's people that say they do branding and like put it on a, I don't know, a chart, it would be 98% brand identity designers claiming that branding is more because I think of course it helps us like we're going to influence your whole all of your touch points but in reality there's not a lot of branding studios even that look at interior or sound or whatever their sonic branding agencies or whatever you want to call them like it's still I think very much like a dream state where we're in where we want to achieve that but very much so that most branding people actually create logos and identities and maybe they get into other touch points like ux and like it, it does bleed into a lot of stuff and especially like now i think we're getting in the realm of brand strategy where it becomes this thing of like we're uh, by the way paul lewis said the definition of branding here the art and science of creating brand personality which is really interesting because then like we get into a lot of people would consider that maybe brand strategy once you start getting really deep into what's the tone of voice what's the personality is that still branding or is that brand strategy that's already like an interesting question because again i think it has to do with that approach to branding you could have a really broad approach as it being like all things connected to brand but then the question really becomes like as a discipline does it really represent that as well and i think there's some issues there but maybe let's first dive into a little bit of that part of brand strategy and then maybe we can hop in again and talk about like how broad we want to see these things um for me brand strategy is a platform that bridges business strategy with branding and communication. So that's really where I think brand strategy is not just branding, but it's really a platform that bridges business strategy. So it looks at business strategy and it translates that into something people can use to create branding with, but also communication. And I think that's where, for me, brand strategy is a difference with just like let's say discovery or what a lot of people call it when they're doing brand identity design is you're also considering the marketing part the communication part where you're really thinking about okay so this brand needs to work on these channels with these messages with this personality it needs to look distinctive but it needs to tap into the business strategy and that's something i think a lot of people miss out on when they're, when they're thinking about brand strategy but it's a very vague definition, uh, consciously, because I want to keep that open, uh, and I want to hear your your guys' take on what we what, what I've been saying right now. So uh, maybe uh, before I dive into the brand strategy kind of definition, I just want to uh, quickly interject there just to say I'm I I'm sorry if I misspoken and and said something about creating visual assets because I was pretty sure that my definition was. The continuous effort to influence those perceptions through internal and external touch points. Mm -hmm. I do not believe that branding is purely about visuals. I do believe certainly it's uh, about brand personality. It's about uh, your, your tone of voice. It's the uh, the sauna uh, brand. So brand identity is a lot of different things, not just uh, the visuals. That's how I see it. 
And uh, to me, uh, the brand strategy is really uh, a set of calculated short-term and long-term recommendations for those branding efforts. So it's a kind of a roadmap or plan for essentially to execute the branding efforts. So for me, the, the three definitions, brand, branding, and brand strategy, they kind of have to go hand in hand. You can have one without the other, but it's always better if they are together. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. Nice one. Yeah, I mean, brand strategy to me, I think is always a, that misconceived thing, especially of the last couple of years of seeing a lot more designers or branding people change to a brand strategist role. Thank um, you, I Chris find that Doe. problematic. Be <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I don't think he claims to well, be a brand I mean, strategist, though, does he? No, no, no. He says, no. Oh, he's, he's not <laughs> Yeah, I think it was. I think it was people not reading the between the lines well enough to realize what was discovery and what is brand strategy or what is strategy in, in itself. And I think that's the the lost in translation moment there, where people just believe, okay, I'll put brand strategy in my title and I'm a brand strategist. Sure, that can be true if you're okay. if your client, yeah, and just get more money because of it. you can charge ten grand for thinking. I love that line. Um, <laughs> it, that it, it, it's problematic because it's not particularly true depending on what you are offering and what your client's expectations are of that experience from you offering brand strategy of what that's going to give them and what's that going to do for their business if you look at strategy as a, a broader term it, it's to understand what the problem is and achieve a common goal either for your business and for your customer if it's brand strategy but if you look at it like war like a war, strategic war strategy is to strategic war strategy a strategy for war is uh to overcome your opponent to get past that problem that you have in the way and how you are going to execute that you try you test you know you come in with your best foot forward and for a brand strategist it's realistically trying to figure out what's this business's problem or what's their goal what's getting in the way of that because they haven't been able to do it themselves so it's up to you now to think about how we can best do it it's understanding all the different players, you know, in the deck of, of cards that you have to work with to come out with the best result possible, be it a suggestion, a recommendation, whatever it is. Um, and if you can try and test it and, and execute on it, even better. But I hazard a guess that most strategists aren't doing the hard yards to execute on the, you know, the, 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 the recommendation that they have, be it a brand identity, be it a PR solution, be it a marketing or advertising, whatever it might be. Um, so to me, it's it's a case of brand strategists can come in not just to create a brand identity. I think that's very narrow-sighted to say that a brand strategist is there to create an identity, to create that personality. I think it, it, it's not encompassing the full repertoire of what a brand strategist should be. And I say that only because I've heard of... Um, and seeing brand strategists at a high kind of level, you know, I'm talking like a uh, company, you know, scalable of the likes of Coca-Cola or whoever, needing a brand strategist and every role or, or thing that that person need to, needed to do didn't involve one part of visual identity, didn't involve one part of messaging. It was nothing to do that. I was in, like, I was scared by what that role actually was. And it really, for me, was a case of, yes, it can, as a result, be a recommendation to create an identity. But what it's really there a lot of the time for many brands is to make sure that that, that perception or that experience is maintained. But then if shit hits the fan, what do we do as a brand to maintain that and get back on course so that we are in good graces with our customers, so that we don't have a tarnished brand that people are perceiving of us? Let's say like if you're BP and you have an oil spill in the middle of the ocean, what the hell do you do in that situation as a brand? Because everyone's going to turn you know, their backs on you. How do we get out of that? That's that brand strategist role to really figure out how the hell do we help this business get out of this along with the PR person, along with the marketing person, along with the advertising person and even the brand identity designer and they change the frigging logo. And that's mm -hmm. supposed to, you know, change, you know, the, the perception. It can, and with time, it, it can. But I think just to say that it is only for your purpose as a brand strategist is there to develop the identity of a business, the core stuff, the intangible stuff, the feeling that values that it, it, it's scraping the surface of what you should be offering your businesses. And 
that's okay because if you're only offering that, I hazard a guess that you're working with smaller businesses that don't have that risk involved in their, their business of having that perception of something like Coca-Cola or Apple, and that's okay. It's what your customer or client is looking for. And if you're saying you're a brand strategist and you're offering basically discovery with brand identity attached to it, of messaging and maybe not the visuals, but then so be it. But it's realizing that it's not the full gamut of what brand strategy actually is. That's that's my take. It's a bit of a rant, yeah. but... No, yeah. I think I want to rob Meyerson this and put it on a spectrum like he did last week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think it's not that it's not that linear. And, and like I was at first I started doing branding and then I started getting into brand strategy. And at a certain point I was doing like purely more brand strategy involvements. And this was also in like a more corporate environment. And I started seeing like the the language I had to develop and, and the things I had to do in terms of depth of research and like the, the data I had to provide and all of that stuff. Like the, the, it had nothing to do with like the actual brand identity design. I was in a different realm. And then I came back to this, this whole branding uh, thing. And I realized like there is so many different types of like brand strategists out there. And, and I think that's where some of these problems arise. When, when you put it in your title, client comes to you and he has a certain set of expectations that isn't the right one. I'd, I'd say like it's probably safer to maybe call yourself, I don't know, a branding specialist or a consultant or a brand identity designer for that matter with a strategic approach just to make sure that you don't have that problem of them like running into you and then afterwards saying like, okay, we did expect you to do something completely different. And I think this is more a matter of actually just your sales process, just making sure because no matter what, like a branding brand, everything is going to be on the table and it's best to just put it in front of them and say like, what do you expect I'm going to deliver? And then talk about that because there's no, I, I, I guess there's never going to be that one definition on branding or brand strategy for that matter. But I agree, like it's, it's, it gets a lot deeper than just discovery, but it is definitely on a spectrum and it has to do with risk, as you mentioned. Like for some businesses, they come to you, the CMO knows they've done their research, they've done maybe the brand strategy part and they say, we want to rebrand. And now it's your job to get enough context so you can do a proper branding effort, but it's not your job to go and scout the whole market for opportunities in terms of whether you need to rebrand or invest more in advertising. I think that's where like that, that sliding scale comes in a little bit. Yeah. Like yeah, let's say if you were a spectrum. Yeah. Sorry, Ilya. Yeah, if, if, sorry, go for it, man. I was just going to say, there's definitely a spectrum, like you're saying, Steph. It's, there's, um, cause and that's the part of the reason is because of that um, the definitions aren't clear to to the clients who are um, you know engaging with you as a brand strategist like you say some people expect uh, certain things from that definition or from that uh, term and that can mean yeah like you say a lot of different things like there's a, a paul lewis has uh, been a great contributor to this conversation as well i feel like we, we should, should loop him in a on the, on <laughs> yeah i should have so he's got the uh, brand strategy definition as making choices about how you present your business to attract and retain your ideal customers, including messaging, verbal, visual, and auditory cues and experiences. And I think while I definitely uh, agree with that definition, I still reckon that that's still only uh, a part of it because like even you were saying before, Frank, it's not just about how you are talking to the customers, but it's also how do you... Uh, position yourself in the market versus your competitors and then you know it's also how do you um, overcome certain challenges or obstacles and, and certain goals so so um, i don't think it's only purely customer focused so there's there's a lot of other components there's customers there's competitors there's the category you're in uh, you know if we want to talk about the five p's of marketing you know there's the promotion price place and all, and all the rest of it there's, there's a eight. lot of other elements <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but I mean, there's, there's other angles, you know, I think that's still um, only part of it where when you talk about just brand strategy is only about how you present yourself to the customers. I think there's more to that. I think that's more branding. I would define that more as branding than brand strategy personally. Yeah. And I think, again, that, that really depends on where you come from. Like, 
I discovered this whole world of, of people in advertising. They talk a lot of by, about brand strategy, brand planning, and brand management. Even if you look on Wikipedia for the definition of brand strategy, you actually just get referred, like forwarded to the page, um, which is called brand management, which is quite funny because like it it does feel like a different type of job where a brand manager is somebody that really like maintains a brand and he's probably in-house doing that stuff. While we, I think a lot of people in the branding space talk about brand strategy more as like this elaborate face, this, this mo almost like exploded briefing stage where we just go really deep into the context of the brand. And I think that's where, yeah, it, it's just, it's just not easy to to have a singular thing because the context for so many people is so different, which makes it, I think, kind of hard. But I mean, that's why we're here, right? To to at least have some uh, points. Uh, I also see Joff, Joff McAllister, a fellow Aussie. Uh, Joff. Jeff. 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 I'm sorry, Jeff. I want to keep saying Jeff. Jeff. That was his Jeff. Australian accent, I think. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Jeff. Uh, Jeff says, I feel brand strategy is most beneficial to medium to large scale business with communication teams. Smaller businesses struggle really with the concept of brand strategy. And I, again, that's so important, that context, the scale of the business, the amount of risk involved, because I, I do want to make one point on that. I think Jeff is completely right. Just one thing, though, it's not just the scale in, the, in terms of like the it's often I mean, it. A lot of people say, yeah, startups don't need strategy. It depends, again, like if they invest a million dollars into their to market strategy, it's probably going to be a good idea to explore the market more. But if they're just, it's just, if it's just a guy with an ID, then maybe it's not necessary. But I guess that's what Jeff also refers to as scale. So yeah, great point, uh, Jeff. Maybe we need to get into like some other issues um because like i think the brand strategy part i think we talked about it we we know it's very contextual um but like i have a couple of issues written down here unless you guys want to dive a little bit deeper into some of the things we just said yeah i want to touch on quickly just uh, i think for many that and i had this experience in conversation with a few other designers that after the future with chris and and um i was in jose brought out core everyone thought that was brand strategy i think that's a real misconception because at the end of the day it was just discovery to to build you to build ux websites like ux kind of thinking for a website um it it was then kind of shifted to help create a brand identity but it to me it it felt like it was missing something of brand strategy and i spoke to one particular designer who said he was about to walk into a room and do core as a framework to take through what he said he was going to be brand strategy until he realized what exactly they actually needed. I'll be your friend in fair weather. <laughs> Sorry, my Siri's <laughs> going off. <laughs> That's so weird. Um, that always happens. Um, and then he, he backed out of it because he realized what they needed was not going to be this. Like he was like, they've got some real problems here that need some serious strategic results. Yeah, I don't think what I'm about to put up here is going to help in any in any way. I'm probably going to be laughed out of the room and I've talked them into however many thousands of dollars that I've, you know, quoted them for this. And it's just not, you Sorry. know, the, the thing that... That's all right. <laughs> there we go. Technical stuff um, going on. Oh, oh no, I'm back I'm, in the middle. I'm, I'm in the middle. You've well, been demoted. Oh, no. I'm okay, going again. back. There we my, go. My awesome. camera just fell off, so I had to do some stuff. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. But yeah, it, it was. It was. He was kind of set up to fail in that context. It. it but it, that kind of framework is helpful if you are there to be a brand, what I would call a brand identity designer, where you're helping that business develop an identity that they haven't already crafted, or they're not happy with, or that isn't really fitting of what they are trying to offer and connect with their customers. Or whatever it might be um so there's some limitations in what some people offer as, as brand strategy but the interesting thing that i wanted to touch on quickly before we probably move on to something else is having done marty Newmeyer's brand level c um, workshop his whole premise of creating that was to have 
someone like us as a branding person sit in the C-suite level. That's the, the whole point of what this is that he's you know, offering and all the different levels that he's offering is to have someone sit at that table to make the shots on what is a branded decision or brand related decision. If stuff hits the, you know, shit hits the fan or if there's some new element to the business and how they're going to position that in relation to what already exists, or if they do want to or need to rebrand because of X, Y, and Z, there's someone there that influences that decision to tell them either, you know, proactively or not, um, or reactively is the other option um, in that situation. And that's kind of what I think is the strategist is there kind of to be to be able to be agile or to offer something that is of management, like you said before, um, Steph. But for a small to medium business, like Jeff says, uh, brand strategy in that grand scheme of things is so not necessary. And it's overkill. And you're, yeah. you're, you're taking someone through thousands and thousands of dollars that is totally unnecessary. Yeah, and, and I really want, because somebody in uh, uh, Hashem, Garashi mentioned, I think brand strategy is like steroids for small business. It can boost them to reach higher levels and then grow their team to take it from there. And he asked if our opinion, and I, I wouldn't agree with that. I think actually like brand strategy in a lot of cases is, as you mentioned, it's, it's actually more overkill than it is steroids for small businesses because, and this is something I learned recently from uh, JP Gastlin, really interesting uh, strategist person and he mentioned the the concept of emergent strategy and what he basically says is like businesses brands live in a very complicated complex world and for small businesses you can't really like predict what's going to happen because they haven't got any validation there they haven't been in the market and often like or they don't have the, the resources to do this stuff and often it's smarter to be a little bit like just just take a leap of something that's going to work because you have to do that at a certain point. You have to take that leap of, okay, this brand personality or whatever, we're gonna look like this because we believe that's gonna work. And there's no amount of brand strategy that's really gonna solve that problem. I think where brand strategy becomes more valuable is actually on the opposite side of the spectrum, internally convincing organizations. And the bigger the organization, the more convincing it needs. And that's where brand strategy becomes more and more valuable because it creates like a this platform for a lot of people to agree upon something and then they can make a bold choice. But for a small business, sometimes it's just okay to say, look, we all at the table here, we all assume the same thing is gonna work. Let's make that leap and go for it. And that's a bit contradictory to, to what I've been telling to a lot of people, like you need to think more strategically. But I think that's something I realized through experience. Yeah. If you were to have a some if you were to have someone come to you, a business owner come to you and they said we need a new logo, identity and everything like that, you'd take one look at it as a branding person and go, Yeah, you probably do because it looks like shit. Um <laughs> and, and right there there's no that's no strategic decision made there at all, apart from your educated experience and knowing that what they've got probably isn't going to hit the mark because it's a very complicated logo that they have and yeah you're probably right you've made a great educated decision or guess that what you have at the moment isn't quite up to snuff um, and then you go through the motions and that's typically what will happen at a smaller scale because they've either you know come to market with something that was designed by themselves or by someone on fiverr which is totally okay there's there's no you know problems with doing that you're ticking those boxes just to be present but if they come to a strategist they go oh, we need we need to rebrand it's like okay great let's strategically think about what's going to be best for you for your customer for the whole experience to create something um but you like that's again it's, it's tipping it's touching one tip of that iceberg of what the potential is but it, again what the potential is below the surface is again wholly unnecessary to cover because and i say this because and there was a point that you made before um steph was that not all businesses can do all of these things they don't go into the detail of creating other different experiences because they a lot of the time they can't they don't either have the touch points that are irrelevant or that they don't have the budget to explore those other options to really grow that business. And they may never even get to that point of being a business that just grows and grows and grows. They might just stay very stagnant. 
Um, so like if you can't offer a, a sensory uh, experience of, of audible sounds and, and things like that in the context of how you present yourself as a business, then, you know, you can't really be doing these things. And that's that's got to be okay sometimes um, that you're not offering that full brand identity. That's one thing I just wanted to quickly bring up because I wrote that down and I just wanted to share that. Sorry, guys, by the way, I'm, I'm just uh, struggling. I don't know why my software is bugging me. That's like classical, uh, <laughs> classical, what we call that Murphy, right? Uh, but great points there. Murphy's law. <laughs> um, Ilya, you want to dive into that or you want to, we, we want to like shift gears and talk about something else a bit? No, I just want to uh, comment on uh, maybe briefly what uh, Frank was saying as well. Uh, like he mentioned the C-suite um, or that um, uh, course by Martin Neumeyer. And, and so I guess I think um, it's, I see it as a great stepping stone for brand strategists, the people that want to think more strategically, because I've always felt that, you know, us as creatives, we, we can always contribute to uh, to the bigger conversation about the business. So. Uh, I do see strategy as purely recommendations, like you were saying, Steph. It's 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 what we guess or what we you know we can't predict exactly what will happen. We can only put up forward our best opinion, uh, educated guess, uh, educated opinion, uh, or predictions about what we think should happen, and therefore recommendations. And but what I do feel that is a great uh, development uh, from New Martin Neumeyer, for example, is just the fact that. He is bringing us, you know, let's say designers or us creatives to the table where we can start having those conversations. So I don't, I don't believe that we need to start solving the business problems necessarily. Some of us are at different levels, obviously, and, and we need to be able to, you know, grow and evolve into those roles to be able to provide that business type of uh, recommendation. But without us having a seat at that table, uh, you know, the proverbial table, we won't develop those skills. So I think it's great that people start getting involved in those conversations. And for example, that with that uh, example, Frank, that you were giving, where a designer you were chatting, they kind of understood that, you know, their core framework or whatever that, you know, the set of exercises they had probably not going to solve that uh, problem. But it still took strategic thinking for them to understand that that's, you know, what they were offering is not actually going to solve that particular problem. And the more they, you know, we all as designers and as creatives, the more that we can get involved in those conversations, I think the more we can actually start to think and be able to think creatively. And I think that's why we are there at the seat at the table is because we can offer that additional creative angle, if you like. There's, there's always, uh, you know, creativity has to do with a lot of intuition and, and our gut feeling, let's, you know, if we want to, uh, reference uh, the you know Martin Neumeyer again in there, but you know it's about our gut feeling and what we feel is going to be right based on the components that we know about, and I think it's a great uh, development. So I don't know if every brand strategist or you know person who calls themselves a brand strategist needs to know, you know, from zero level to hundred level of you know everything about the business and, and what a business can do to solve any given problem. But it's good to have and start developing the skills to be able to, uh, you know, get yourself into those areas and to have those conversations. Sure, I think w where there's an issue for me is like, I don't. I think I applaud everyone wanting to be more strategic and learn more and get more context before they get into the creative part. I think that's just a great reflex to have. I think where it gets a bit problematic is what a lot of people seeing brand strategy. And thus branding as like this this holy grail thing, which trumps all the other things. I see a lot of these posts like branding versus marketing and branding becomes this like the, the good thing to do and marketing becomes the bad thing to do. And I think that what, what that really shows is our complete like lack of understanding of what marketing really is. And it maybe like puts us at a place where we don't get a seat at a table because we misunderstand some of these, like how these things work together. And I think one of those is like being so obsessed by reading branding book books we, who talk about like, you need to be different. You need to be unique. You need to build brand tribes. And that's all very good, like motivational stuff to build brands. But once you start using that in like telling a business how to act for the coming five years in terms of their communications and you, you're starting to play with risks because it's not always the case that those like interesting guru-ish sounding things really work for a business. And I think that's where 
if you do want to play on that higher level, I do think it's interesting to read up on things like marketing and effectiveness and business strategy. And again, I agree, Ilya, that we don't all have to be like these people with so much breath. You can be just the best like brand identity designer and focus on that and just do a good discovery and tell your clients, like, I'm not going to shift your business perspectives or whatever. But I do think we get into some like danger zones once we start pushing the agenda and we don't really realize the full scope of it, which we probably never can. But I mean, that's my that's my take on it. Just try to get as much breath as you can. Yeah, uh, I'm aligning quite a bit with with what Jeff, Jeff is saying. Your fellow um, Aussie, you always band together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just from a perspective of that, I'm starting to realize a lot with the the clients that I'm working with. If I'm doing a full kind of brand identity from discovery to messaging and visual identity is trying to adapt it to fit their needs and and what I expect that they can realistically do and achieve kind of thing rather than giving them these big blue sky kind of strategies that, you know, sound great and they get everyone fired up, but realistically, can you, you know, do that with the team that you have at the moment? Because I'm probably not going to be the person that executes a lot of these mm. things that we might want to achieve. Um, so if you can't follow through, then I kind of figure well, what's the point of presenting it if you don't believe that they're going to be able to do it themselves. So it's trying to take a step back a bit and realize, okay, if you're, a, especially if they're like a one man band or one woman band, like how can I develop something that is for you in the short term, short to medium term, rather than long term thinking, when it's just you of how you can grow this business and this brand that you want to develop and make that as easily achievable as possible so that you can have and not, you know, confuse the situation by having all these different elements of, okay, you need to show up here, you need to show up here, here's your communication strategy that you need to show up every day on TikTok, whatever the hell it might be keeping it something that is achievable to that person rather than just throwing out these strategies that might work for anyone and everybody, tailoring it to someone, which is something I talked about with my lovely co-host Delphi, who's in the chat as well, listening to this. Just the other night, we were talking about, you know, tailoring a branded output or creating some cookie cutter kind of thing that works for every type of business like them. Um I'm finding more that if you're adapting your branding process to the person that you're working with and giving them something that you know that they can achieve rather than just trying to be the best branding strategist ever possible to give them, you know, <laughs> something that could work if they were a Coca-Cola or that they were the corner stores selling muffins, <laughs> um, you know, trying to a adapt that process appropriately is something that maybe a lot of us are missing because of the frameworks that we have in place and the processes that we have place where we're just kind of ticking the box. Okay, you know, Mr. Client, here's this question, here's this question, here's this question. It doesn't seem from my own experience apply and be helpful to every single client. Um, whether or not that's something that you might agree with, uh, whatever. But from my own experience, that's what I'm finding is it's just not helpful because the client's turning around to me and saying, um, what do we do here? What do we do here? Can you help me do this and, and that? And it's like, okay, we haven't really, really nailed this properly then because if you can't really understand that, Brian, guidelines that I give you, I haven't done my job here to make it as accessible for you to achieve this. Cold text is everything. Paul says it again. And execution is key. I think those are two very important takeaways uh, we can learn from this. Um, Ilya, anything else uh, you would like to add to that? I have one more like small side issue I'd like to tackle and then maybe we can get into yes. some takeaways. Unless Ilya, you want to have a burning point that's added on this? I don't know. I guess it depends how long the... Um, and Alicia is contributing to by the way, as you can hear. Um, but... <laughs> I guess I'll, I wonder how long the 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 key issue that you want to raise there, because I know we can probably debate it for for a while. But I, I just I'll probably summarize maybe what Frank was saying yep. in my way, the way that I understand it is that for me, brand strategy is about providing the plan, uh, an actionable plan for execution of a certain recommendation. So it's got to be. Um, so if you are doing just a brand identity deliverable at the end, that's purely what you do. Then you're probably just doing brand discovery. 
uh, if you're doing some other uh, kind of um, oriented action plan um, for, for a business based on your recommendation, it needs to be executable. Like Frankie was saying, it needs to be something that you believe a brand can do and something that you believe uh, will take them to a place where they, they want to go. Um, and I'll leave it there. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think don't think we need we need to fight. I mean, there's no gloves here. <laughs> now, uh, just one one more interesting point. I saw this really interesting uh, article by uh, um, what's his name again? Damn, Paul Bailey, I think. Yeah, Paul Bailey, and he mentioned the fact that um, like brand as a creator is a bit of a problem. And what he meant by that is that we talk a lot in this industry about brands are doing x or brands need to be more y or brands need to so they we we use brand as this thing as this entity that creates stuff that does stuff while actually a brand is created right we we talked about that at the beginning of the show and i think that is a little bit of an issue where we conflate these two like the brand as something that is created that is like it's a it's assets it's a promise whatever you want to call it but where we start using this word interchangeably with like brands need to be more X or brand needs more whatever. And I think that's a bit of an issue, but I'm not, I'm not sure if you guys think similarly about that. I think probably the misconception is, especially when I hear it on television and in, in, in news or whatever, and they'd say the word brand, and it's, it's definitely referring to the business. Um, about what they need to be doing to be more socially responsible or environmentally responsible or accessible to their users, be it, you know, subtitling their videos or to be more conscious of those who are deaf um, or have learning difficulties, whatever it might be. It's it's, it's becoming, I think, the, the lines are blurring between what a business and what a brand is. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe that's the... That's the hard thing to kind of get by because I would hazard a guess that if you walked into a supermarket and say, what brand do you buy of this kind of toilet paper? They'd go over the shelf and they'd pick because of their logo and they'd know that. But then it's like, okay, well, what's the business? Um, and they go, <laughs> well, it's just the name of the brand. Like it, it's just the same thing. So it, it's there's no kind of different opinion there. It's just one and the same to, to, to those people. So thinking about it for us it's just semantics for us but to a consumer it's just one and the same and i think that's where the conversation kind of stops there we just get falling over our feet just going okay no no no, it's this no no no, it's that like you got me there no i I, that's a fair point i just wanted to say one thing like why it sometimes bothers me is because it gets really abstract when we use brand in that way because we start talking about what is the brand purpose what is the brand whatever and like mm. it becomes really fussy because it's more like what's the the purpose of the business and then how can we make that shine true in the brand maybe i'm maybe i'm like really nitpicking here but i i do i do feel like sometimes because we conflate everything to brand brand values brand belief brand whatever it becomes like this so it's not really the business's purpose it's the brand's purpose but is there like a difference and maybe there isn't but yeah i mean that it, it it's tricky for me I try to avoid I it. I think it's because of that uh, whole concept that we talked about before, you know, how people used to brand their cattle and, and the product is because I think I think probably 80 to 70 percent of people and, you know, uh, consumers would still equate that as a brand is that element or that symbol. So what we've been talking about here is that it's a lot more than just your visual identity or your, you know, sonar identity and your experiences. It's all of the other things as well. but. Uh, I think to the majority of people, a brand is still a business, and that's why there's that confusion. And so, and I do believe that, in my eyes, it's more like 80% of what people uh, experience or perceptions that they get, or the gut feeling that they get, and 20% of what we as a business try to influence. You know, those perceptions. Uh, I, you know, that's kind of the breakdown for me. Yeah, I think I think this was yeah. a non non issue. Just just Reagan solved it, and Ilya got B. So. <laughs> I wanted to. I mean, yeah, but that's the thing. That's the thing. It, it, the the reason why I guess we probably debate this and, and talk about you know why a brand is this and a business is this is that there's an opportunity that we're in the when we're in the room with the client is that we can help educate them what the difference may be so that they can see their business at a bigger picture. This isn't just about profit and selling stuff. This is about creating some connection with 
you know your customers because at the end of the day you're creating something that is more maybe existential than just what they're picking up you know and walking away with um that they have some feeling about like we all have a feeling about nike it's all going to be very different and then if you tell a client that they'll go huh all right well how are we going to help sally do that and how are we going to help bob you know feel better about this because sally feels great about our business but you know bob isn't so great about it so how can we change that feeling and that's what the, the brand is kind of doing so if it's it's if it's used in that kind of context i'm that's how i i think would distinguish the two and where it's purposeful but to a consumer they're going to be using it interchangeably and mm. not really give a shit as long as they don't care at the end of the day they <laughs> They're getting, you know, they're getting a consistent experience with a great product or service as a result of what they need or what they want. That that seems to me what is wholly needed. But from a from a business owner perspective, I think it's a nice thing to realize that there's something more to what they are selling than just what they are selling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, maybe like I think Hasha makes makes that point as well. He says like every strategist has a diff different in his is different in his philosophy of what branding is but the ingredients are universal and i think that's that's something we can agree on and probably like even having these debates for some people they get annoyed because it's like guys come on get over it like just just do your job but i do think like it's still still valuable just so we can get together and talk a little bit about i mean branding and all this stuff like if somebody tells me like hey man branding is your why i'm like what <laughs> and i do like to talk about it because at the, at the end of the day if, if everybody agrees that branding is your why and clients come to you and they buy your services okay let's get on with it but that's not the case so that's why i like having these discussions but i think we we've had some valuable points and i think the the most important point is probably that context is key right yeah. yeah and and our def our definition is always going to change over time depending on sure. again context and i think when we, i said this before we got on live here it was it's kind of like that bruce lee quote be like water and and be adaptable to what you know is needed at the time and so our definitions are going to change you know every <laughs> every time we do one of these calls i had a, a hazard a guess but to, to be honest like an I, I copied i copied my i have like three definitions ready and when i was copy pasting them for the prep today i changed some words so, so it's like that was two yeah, weeks of course ago you did. i was like nah it's not quite there yet <laughs> Ilya, we'll any there, any closing you, statements you want to make yeah, I think it's because it's so fluid and, and so amorphous, the, the whole brand concept, and it's, and it's still evolving and changing. And I think that's why we're having, you know, difficulty all coming up with the same definitions and, and or even the definition sticking, you know, for, for a long time because it, it is kind of evolving. So I think the best that, that we can do is continue to, to update our definitions and have, having these conversations because it's definitely important because I think for what it does, at least for us, it, it helps us helps us to clarify what we think and also to be able to communicate that to you know to our clients and who we talk to and, and who we try to see if you know if whether they need a branding uh, strategy a brand strategy or whether they need branding services and but it's also you know helps the whole um kind of uh, overall industry or anyone who's tuning in kind of uh to clarify what um and comp to contribute to the definitions as well so we can all kind of I think that's the reason why for having these debates in the first place is to have an open discussion about this because we have it, you know, in those comments on LinkedIn and on Instagram. Nobody ever sees it apart from those two people or three people having the conversation. Hopefully, here we're having a bit more of a uh, reach and a few more voices added to the mix, and we can actually, um, you know, talk about them live and, and discuss them because. As you know, as both of you know, if you're talking to a client or is selling something to a client or trying to show them the idea, you're not going to be able to do it with 10 emails going back and forth. You know, you're going to have, you know, jump on the video call or, or discussion with them because you can, mm -hmm. you know, you can see the reaction. You can, you can discuss things. You can have ideas that you haven't thought about before that you can discuss openly and uh, genuinely rather than sitting on it for, you know, angrily for for you know two hours <laughs> thinking of what to reply with you know and it's i think it's a, a great um initiative hopefully more people tune in and uh contribute like paul did and hashem and uh, jeff and, and all the others who uh, have contributed their voices in delphi thanks very much for for contributing
Absolutely. I like yeah, Paul's, I mean, uh, I like Paul's he, one there. Just all definitions are wrong. Some are useful. That's amazing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Paul. Paul was like the narrator through all of this. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, again, like Jeff, everyone, Hashem, Delphi, everyone. Thanks, Jermaine. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for contributing to this conversation. Uh, I think it was really fun. And we will be back with round number three. And we'd love to know what you want us to tackle. Uh, any hot topics you'd like us to, to tackle, let us know on Instagram or YouTube in the comments, whatever we can have. Like let next time, let's make something we can get really angry about. So I want to see some rage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys, thank you so bank. much. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for being here. Cheers. See ya.